I'm DJ Premier, and I present to you, So What's Up. Okay, computer. Run it back. So what's up? Back in episode 23, we did an episode on Rough Riders' own D-Block members called The Locks. All right? Y'all know who The Locks are. Jada Kiss, Sheik Looch, Styles P the Ghost. While we're at the Rough Riders uh, Corral, always rest in peace to the Dog Man X. DMX, we love you, bro. Forever. Arr! You know what I'm saying? Oh, I like he was like, I can't bark like him, but y'all, you, you get the picture. Moving from there, like I said, episode 23, we did recognize, but that was a locks song, all right? This time, we're coming back to Yonkers, but this is a solo LP, actually, the debut solo LP of Jada Kiss. The album is called Kiss the Game Goodbye. Dope title, dope everything. And a lot of hits. Put your hands up. All right, or like they said, fuck that, put your hands down. Big, big record in the tunnel back in the days. Also, Knock Yourself Out. Another banger on there, you know what I'm saying? Shout to the homie Swiss Beats. Another Rough Riders family affiliate. Shout to DNY too. You know, the, the true connection. Shout out to Eve. Like they call her the pit bull in a skirt. And that's what she is. Great performer, great writer, great everything. Shout out to Eve, man. One of the illest female MCs ever in hip hop culture. All right? You heard that from me, and hip hop culture would confirm that as well. So it's official, period. All right? And shout out to all the Rough Riders affiliates. But check this out. Back to the solo debut of Jada Kiss's album, Kiss the Game Goodbye. Of course, he enlisted me as one of the people to do a record with him for the debut album. This is an album that was supposed to drop in 2000 in April. It got moved all the way to August of 2001 to finally re be released. With that said, cooked up a beat, had to go away. And when I made the beat, I sent it to Jada Kiss to get it cracking because I figured he'll cut it, we'll get it back. Mind you, we were still not digital as far as how we were doing it because I was still working out of D and D recording studios at 320 West 37th Street in Manhattan. Everybody knows that spot. A lot of great records came out of that studio, and this is one of them. Shout to Dave Lotwin and Doug Grammer, who is the D and D of D and D. I like left field beats that I do. I have my standard ones that are, you know, premier standards. This one was left field because you're dealing with Jada Kiss. You got to kind of get off the road and go into the dirt road and spin those tires. All right. None of y'all better. All right. Now. Shout out to Alchemist, because when I mentioned this to some of the hits on that album, I said, put your hands up. I said, knock yourself out. This one right here, but to me, the ultimate and one of the most classic records to ever be released in hip hop culture on this same album was the Alchemist produced record, We Gon' Make It. Woo wee, man. Just play a little bit of that. To this day, as soon as you hear bum, 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 the whole crowd knows what's about to happen. All right? Now back to this one, which was also on the album. But Alchemist saw this. And oh, when uh, he made that beat, I was there at his apartment when he played it for me. I was like, bro, 
that right there is sick. And it is one of the sickest records in hip hop culture. It's up there with Eric B for president. It's up there with South Bronx and the bridge is over. It's up there with New York State of Mind. It's up there with PSK. It's up there with the bridge from MC Shan. It's up there with so many records. Rapper's Delight, The Message from Grandmaster Flash and the Furious Five. The Breaks from Curtis Blow. Christmas Rapper from Curtis Blow. Houdini, Five Minutes of Funk. I rest a piece of ecstasy. Again, man, just so many records. I, I gotta name at least two more. Public Enemy, Don't Believe the Hype. Rebel Without a Pause, ugh. Rebel Without a Pause is just one of the most sickening, craziest hip hop records. It's up there with that, all right? I had to say those names because that's how much of an effect that record has on the history of great fucking records. All right, see how hyped I got it? Like I went from, hey everybody, to yo! That's hip hop to me, all right? Dope music in general, timeless music. Back to this. See that? The, it says P Fat. That was the module called the Planet Fat that I used to use to play bass lines and other sounds to fill in the blanks wherever needed. As a DJ, I've always kind of known when a record is being produced by me, if something's still missing or if there's too much or if it needs more scratches or not. It's just a thing. It's a DJ thing and it's a fan mode thing. I'm in fan mode of... Man, the record should be this way. The man, the record should be this way, just as a fan. But as a producer and a DJ, it's also that mentality all combined, and that's how I create my records to this very day. So the Planet Fat is also on there. And then I just looked, and Alchemist, I, I called him right before I shot this episode on FaceTime and showed him the disc. He goes, ooh, it's 98.3. He said, you got 0.3. That's some producer shit, you know. Usually it's just an even number like 98 or 97 or 72 or uh, 81, whatever. Never 0.3, sometimes even 0 0.5, 0 0.7, just 0.3. So it's a producer shit. So if it's too nerdy, uh, I, I done said it now. So shout to my nerd side. All right, now back to that being another record on that album that was you know, also special. I get a call from Styles P, all right? I know Jadakiss got the beat. He's the only one I gave it to, and he's the only one I'm communicating with to get it done so that we could get the record finished, mixed, and uh, there was no hook yet because I always like to hear the lyrics usually before. The only thing I had is the Ain't None of Y'all Better line in there just so that they could kind of set a tone. I didn't know he was gonna write it to that scratch, but that became the title, all right? which is from the Locks record, Recognize. Matter of fact, check out where I got the line from. Ain't none of y'all better than Locks. Have all of y'all dressed up in a suit, dead in a box. See that? All right. It was the perfect thing to go with it. Oh, you know what else I also had? The Rough Rider. The Rough, 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 Rough. That was also added there, too. The rest of it, the hook, was after the fact. Now, back to this. The crazy thing was, as I said earlier, and I keep stopping and going left and right, but that's just me. Styles P gives me a call and says, yo, you know me and she go on it too. I was like, really? He's like, yeah. I was like, cool, let's get it. He said, there's no way you're giving Kiss a beat and we ain't rocking together on it. I was like, that makes it even more better even though none of y'all other people, not them, are better than Locks. But the crazy thing, as I said, we'd already done a record together with the three of them, but this one, they're like, there's no way he's doing it dolo. He's doing it with us, and we're making it like another Locks record, even though it appears on a solo album. Now we can get to this floppy disc. The sounds are contained on this floppy disc. Every bit of it, the kicks, the snares, the samples, just all the sounds, the weird sounds, all that. Not the scratches, of course. That's laid manually. Everybody knows I don't come up with the idea. Sometimes MCs come up with the idea. I always say Guru gave me a lot of scratch ideas. Rest in peace to Guru, Gangstar for life. Shout out to Big Shug, the co-founder of Gangstar. And also people like Jay-Z used to give me scratch ideas. Biggie gave me scratch ideas. And then, of course, y'all know I do a lot of them on my own. So... I'm, I'm always open to any idea. When I like it, I'm with it. When I'm not, I'm not with it. So I'm not, that, that's how easy it is to deal with me on that level. So 
sounds on here. This little floppy disk. I like turning it around, like almost like a record. All right, but this is a little little thing to contain all of this stuff on, of data on here. But once it's saved, it's saved on an Akai. This is the sampler I used to use. There's various samplers that was out, but in our era of the 90s, we were using, a lot of us were using the Akai S950 sampler. There is a 900, which had less sample time than the 950, but then the 950 came out. We all graduated to that one. They look exactly alike, but the only difference is there's a 900, and the, the later one was the 950. Okay. Everything from here is, store, is stored, goes into that machine. Once it goes into that machine, you got to make sure that it communicates because it's got to be printed. We call it printed. We don't really call it recorded too. When you put the sounds down, because we didn't have Pro Tools at the time, you print it to two inch tape. And that's how we did our thing. If you made one mistake on there, you cannot undo it like you do in the digital world. You are completely gone and have to redo it again. So the pressure of getting it right was a lot more heavy on us artists to get it right and not mess up. And that's one of the reasons why we prided ourselves on making really complete records because there was really no room for mistakes. You know what I'm saying? So how do we get that tape to print those sounds? There is a box called the Roland SBX80. It is a sync box that communicates with not only the sampler, I was programming the pads and the sounds on a drum machine called the Akai MPC60. I also used the Akai MPC62, which was the second version of that model. Either one of them had the same command, same everything, and also shout to Roger Lynn who was a part of those two machines before he left the Kai and actually came back and then left again. But Roger Lynn is one of the most ultimate scientists of this whole technology thing way before digital. He was already that advanced. Shout out to Roger Lynn one more time. Okay, this beat was so special to me that I said, it can't just come on. It needs an intro. So that's another beat that I had to make before this beat drops. This one was already made, but let's make an intro. Something that's short and sweet, doesn't distract from the main beat. Here's the first beat. Sort of like the Holy Trinity, some say. I say it's like three different guns, you fucking think I have Get shot. The crazy thing too is Styles knew from the intro that I had already put down that when he says get shot three different ways, he timed it out to really drop when he said three different ways. DJs could actually go three different ways and on different the beat drops where you could cut that three different ways. Three different ways. Not until you insert the disc to lay it down and put it into the 950 so that all the machines can now have a conversation. Here is how it goes when the beat drops. Three different ways. Matter of fact, make that six different ways. Gun in each hand, bitch. None of y'all better. Ain't none of y'all better. If it is, name it. Ain't none of y'all better. ASAP, Bill. All I know, niggas give me all my dough. Like Boston George coming through with all my blow. Right now I'm trying to charter a jet. Fuck this, hit the Panama Canal and get a heart to connect. Step on your toes, mess with your hoes, shoot up your mans. Come through the block trying to screw up your plans. Cause I still rob niggas for coke. Understand, I'm the first one they call when they get in the dope. I'm the one who prick your finger when they give you the oath. I'm the one who made the hit when they bring you the toast. Like Pacino and De Niro, so they call me Panero. Sad style, still spitting that arrow. Fuck it, like the boss. In New York, you know I failed. Kill a motherfucker, cause of course, don't talk. No doubt. 16 in the joint with one in the head. Think the bullets had legs, had they run in your head, oh. bitch. Ain't none of y'all better. Oh. <laughs> what y'all know huh. about putting my word on the block? Ain't none of y'all better. <laughs> one of my most favorite tracks ever. It wasn't a number one hit, it wasn't a platinum hit, but it's one of the dopest 
raw street records that I've ever created. And I'm proud of this one. Like, I'm proud of all of them, but this is definitely one of my favorites of all time out of my stable of records that I've done. And uh, salute to Jada Kiss on his debut album, Kiss the Game Goodbye. And salute to the locks, Sheik Looch, Styles P, and of course, I'll say it again, Jada Kiss, and the whole Rough Riders family, you know who you are, and you know the last part of this, that's what's up. What? None of y'all better. Bitch, I know about putting my word on the block. Ain't none of y'all better. Let you know it's all real. Is it real? Yes, sir. Ain't none of y'all better. Let you know it's all real. Ain't none of y'all better.